All righty. So now we're into uh, in, into segment three. This is our our part of our uh, of our episode where our guest gets to impart some wisdom and share some thoughts with our viewers and our listeners. So, mate, over to you. You're going to talk to us about um, meat and selecting different barbecue cuts. Very important information. Yeah. Look, as barbecue evolves, um, I'm getting more and more families coming in. More and more, actually, more and more young guys like. It's nothing for a 15-year-old guy to come in with his mum and be looking for a brisket because he's just been watching it on TV. He probably might have been watching your podcast. He's been watching Pitmaster, you know, because it, the food channels are big and, and it is a big part of the um, of food culture now. And, you know, they'll say, oh, I want a brisket. I want to first cook. I, I don't know what to use. What should I use for me? I don't want to spend too much money. I, I might just get a cheap brisket or I might just get a cheap cut of meat. And there's lots and lots of different ways to start off your barbecue journey. For instance, a uh, lamb shoulder is pretty foolproof. Um, Pulled pork, you know, a collar butt's foolproof. But beef, if you want to do beef, a lot of them want to use briskets. And um, if you're going to go for a heart, a, a really, really cheap brisket for your first go, you're more than likely going to bugger it up and you're, uh, you're going to be disillusioned because the harder, the, the better quality it is, the easier it is to cook. So I would sort of suggest if you're starting barbecue, go with a tri-tip or a rump cap or something that's not so big, you know, it, it's only going to feed four or five. Uh, don't waste your money on a cheap brisket. Don't go to um, one of those big chains and get a really, really cheap one and a half kilo chunk of brisket, you're going to be sitting there for 12 hours and wondering what's going on and it's going to be shocking. So um, I, I just think probably um, get a good relationship with your local butcher or maybe two or three butchers if you want around your way. But but I think that's really important because, um, you know, our customers, so many of them I know personally now, and uh, they might say, look, can you get a Brahma hump? And I'll source a Brahma hump. If I can't, I'll tell them, if I don't do something, I know someone else does, it might be goat or whatever, I'll point them in the right direction. But the same as all food, you know, it's probably good to to uh, go to the market and, and form a relationship with your fruiterer. I, I know my daughter goes to the dandy market. She only goes to the one fruiterer every week. Might not be the best one, but she's got a good relationship with them. And um, I, I think meat selection, do your homework um, and start off easy and work your way up. But rather, a smaller, really good quality thing is better than a big, bad quality thing at the same price. That, that'd that be my advice. Yeah, very good, mate. Um, you were mentioning before about how uh, some of the different steak cuts have different names. I've been running around the Gold Coast in the past looking for tri-tip and I had to go to 17 butchers before I found yeah. one who knew what I was talking about. Is there another name for tri-tip that I should be using? I don't think there is. <laughs> oh, okay. Tri-tip is a thing that's strangely really big in San Diego. So I don't know why it's, that's where it's big, but I, I, would, I would probably think it might be left from the rump cap. Like you, you take off a rump cap, you've got the tri-tip on the other side. It's probably a byproduct of... Uh, of rump cats, but um, it's only a tri-tip. I think it, rump tail might be another name, but you won't, a rump tail is only going to be small. So I don't think there's another name for them. Picanha and rump cap are two different names, but tri-tip, I only know them as one. But oh, okay. a lot of people Interesting. don't know much about them as yet. It's, it's not something that's, we sell a lot of them now, but um, it's not, something that everybody knows about, I guess. Yeah, right. Interesting stuff. Now, I'm just going to swing back to what you're talking about, about um, selecting different cuts. What should people be looking for when they're looking for a brisket? If you're looking for a brisket, you can either go grass-fed or grain-fed, or you can go Wagyu, um, Wagyu Black Angus. What I look for is marbling. Marbling, to me, is um, the most important thing with beef, uh, grass fed's more likely to have less marbling. Grain fed's going to have more marbling. Uh, grass fed's got a cleaner flavour. Um, grain fed's got a more buttery flavour. 
But uh, marbling, um, a thick flat, you don't want a flat that's going to um, taper right off because if a flat tapers right off, you're going to have trouble keeping that moist. Well, they can always trim it back and use it for some of it for burgers. Um, yeah, look, a good fat covering and good marbling uh, at good high point. Uh, it's one of those things you just can tell when you can see it. And um, watching watching really good barbecuers and, and teams come in and buying a brisket is um, is a thing in itself. You want to see them. They're just oh, amazing. We, we had Big Mo Kaysen come in just before meat stock. He got all his meat offers for meat stock. And he took an hour to look through the briskets and he off he went with all his stuff and um, then Melbourne went into madness the next the next day and he had to fly home to America. He didn't get to cook. But uh, that was, <laughs> watching him pick a brisket, oh, it was like he was, his life depended on it. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd imagine it's like when you go to the, uh, to the greengrocer you were mentioning before and you see those people and they're like, they they want to buy five apples, so they'll pick up sixty apples and like yeah. sniff the apple and put it back, and then the next one and yeah, yeah. But with meat, um, they've all got different ideas. You know, they've all got their different ideas, and I guess that's why you know they're they're all different levels. I, I know Tuffy Stone cut, hand cuts his wood; every bit's exactly the same. So they're clever. Definitely. Now, pork ribs was was another one that, that I wanted to talk about because uh, everybody wants to be able to do pork ribs, but uh, a lot of people find them to be quite difficult. And my suspicion is that it because is that it's because they're not selecting the right rack of ribs at the start. So tell us, for barbecue, what should we be looking for for pork ribs? There's a really big difference between good and bad pork. You don't want lean pork. Um, that's where the brands come in. It's um, that's what, what's made our life so much easier. Like, for instance, um, Borrowdale, um, nearly every con- every team in Australia that's cooking are using Borrowdale ribs. Their meaty ribs have got just a nice cover on them. I mean, St. Louis ribs, if, um, if you buy St. Louis ribs off a butcher in Australia, you're pretty much buying a uh, pork belly with the rind off. A real St. Louis rib, you need that next layer of meat taken off, but they're not going to take that whole seam of meat off because what are they going to do with it? They want to sell it to you. But um, look, stick, find a brand and stick with it because if you're just going to get, if you're going to buy random pork off a, off a butcher, you, it's going to be different all the time. If you find a brand that you really like, and my favourite brand's Borodale, um, our whole pigs we get, we get St Bernard, which are brilliant, and we get Limestone, which are brilliant. They're two great breeds of pork. But the mass-produced stuff, Borrowdale, just find a brand and you'll know when you see it. It'll have a nice little fine marbling through it. So to, to wrap this up, can you yep. give us a bit of a, uh, a, bit of a uh, behind the scenes, bit of a, a scoop is the word I'm looking for. Can you give us the scoop on what, because uh, you work with a lot of the big barbecue teams, what, what brands and cuts are popular with a lot of the big barbecue teams? You don't need to name the teams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Mayara Wagyu brisket is really, really good. Brilliant. Um, Seven Creeks is another good one. Um, there's one that I won't mention because they won't sell it to me. Um, <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. Fair enough. Pork borrowed ale. Um, spare ribs, beef spare ribs. Cape Grimm's really good. They have a four plus. They're four plus grass fed ribs. Tuffy Stone looked at them and he said they can't be grass fed. They are. They're grass fed in Tasmania. They got they got um, butter grass, which really makes it really really marbled. It's amazing. It's a unique product. Um, yeah, what else would they be? Lamb. Look, lamb or saltbush dorper. There's no real brands. Uh, there are some brands, but most saltbush dorper just they come off the farm. And not a lot of people sell stuff that's not really dorper. Um, if you want to know if it's really tall, but have, have a look at the lamb. The legs have to be really short and stocky. If the legs are short and stocky, they're dorper because they're a South African breed. They're bred for their meat, not for their wool. That's, that's oh. what's... Um, and they eat saltbush, which makes gives them and takes a bit of the flavour into them. Um, they're about the main ones. Um, 
rubs and sources. Um, Heavenly Hell get a fair go. Tree Bark gets a fair go. Jess Proles as uh, stuff goes well. Four sourcemen from New Zealand. Um, there's one meat stock there, has won everything you can think of over at SCA over in New Zealand. I bring them in from New Zealand, so <laughs> so I'm going to plug them, but they're amazing. They really are. Um, look, there's Johnny Max Rubs, Big Boy Barbecue, Lance Rosen. Lance Rosen's one of the greatest barbecues in Australia. Um, yeah, so look, rubs and that are important. Lanes are good, you, and and you got to layer them. You know, you get your own, you get your own combination. Don't just use the one rub. So um, there's some interesting stuff around, but most of them use the same stuff. A lot of the teams help each other out a bit too. They're they're pretty friendly with their advice. They don't tell you everything, but um, but rubs and that are the most important. And Australia is, if it's not leading the way in rubs and sources, I'd be pretty surprised. I think it's. It's pretty good. We started yeah, we off, have. you know, one or two from little small producers. Now all of our stuff, you know, Jackalope's another one from Queensland, which is an absolute ripper, and I'll probably leave some out, which I, I don't want to. BRZ, you know, um, Andre Adrani, who I went to uh, Brazil with, his stuff is amazing, you know. 